Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N Y. And the second word is and, spelled A N D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first coincidence miracle today is something I think is amazing. Uh, I was inspired one day to post on Facebook and LinkedIn for my contacts to explain something that's pretty amazing in the Bible. Uh, the Bible has 2,000 pages typically, depending on how, how large the type set is set. But a basic average Bible, 2,000 pages. And there's one sentence in the Bible that says only one thing is necessary. Now, if you just think about that for just a couple of seconds, 2,000 pages, the Bible is like a, it's a holy book, but also it's a history book of something like 5,000 years of history. Uh, and in this 2,000-page book, there's a line in there that says only one thing is necessary. That's pretty amazing. So we only have to focus on one thing, really. I'll tell you where it is. It's in the book of Luke chapter 10. So if you remember Luke chapter 10, you can read about the one thing necessary. And I'll tell you what it says. It says, all you ever have to do is sit down and ask God what to do, and then he will answer you. You can ask him anything you want, and he'll answer you, and that'll solve all your problems. But very few people have the faith or the perseverance to do that. But you'll find we've got 10,000 saints in history, and you'll find that that's what the saints do. The saints ask God what to do, and they do what God tells them. And there's another place in the Bible, John 14, 26 says, John 14, 26 says, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Once again, John 14, 26 says, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Then later that night, and by the way, this was May 10th or May 11th, I'm not sure which day, right now, but it was May 10th or May 11th of the year 2023. But later that night, I was inspired uh, when I was eating my dinner to turn on the TV, and what what immediately was on the screen when I turned the TV on, uh, just coincidentally was already on, was a Protestant minister uh, named Joseph Prince, pretty famous guy, and he was saying exactly the same thing. He was telling everybody there's only one thing that's necessary, and it's in the book of Luke, chapter 10. So that was a great coincidence miracle for me. I had posted it on Facebook, LinkedIn, on May 10th or May 11th of 2023. And then when I sit down for dinner, turn the TV on, 
immediately what's on there when the TV goes on is Joseph Prince explaining to his audience the exact identical same thing. Our next coincidence miracle is from a person who tells us they were plagued with many problems. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we all get more than one problem. So I don't know how many they had, but they were plagued with several problems. They were praying every day for about a week. They weren't getting any clarity. They were getting more and more confused, more and more stressed out. And finally, one day in prayer, they were inspired to just sit down and, and pray about one thing at a time and get one thing at a time solved. You know, ask God questions about one topic at a time and wait till you get the answers on the one thing at a time before you ask more questions. And I know in my own life that has helped me also and many other people I know. You know, when we have a lot of problems, we're babbling and we're not able to comprehend the answers that are coming into our mind and into our heart. So one specific thing at a time, maybe the most important one first, uh, that's the way it works. And then this person tells us that later that day, they turned on their TV and there was a Protestant minister on there named Robert Morris, uh, Robert Morris, and he was saying the exact same thing to his audience about when you're praying for, for direction and guidance from God, take one thing at a time and pray about one thing at a time. So that's another confirmation. It's a double coincidence miracle because I'm sharing with you two miracles today that are coincidentally people who got inspired by God with answers and then they turned their TV on and the first case was Joseph Prince, a Protestant minister, famous guy. And the second case was Robert Morris, another Protestant minister, another famous guy. So both Joseph Prince and um, uh, Robert Morris are well known for their uh, amazing lectures and their thoroughness uh, with scriptures. So I, I thought I would share with you all, we've got a lot of evidence here. When you, when you have a lot of problems, take one at a time, pray for clarity about it, get it, through, get it resolved, and then go on to the next one one problem at a time. It works a lot better than trying to understand answers you're getting to five or six problems you're having. Our next coincidence miracle happened uh, while I was at the beach during the summer passing out cards about our books. Um, I came upon uh, two friends uh, about the age of 50, two female friends, uh, and they were really very interested in the book when they saw the card I handed to them. Uh, they thought it was about miracles, etc. Uh, one of the women was working right there on the beach, working at pulling together a lecture that she was giving at her church. And uh, when people ask me about my books, I explain often the word idea. And I'm sure you've all heard this a hundred times already. But I explained the I word idea is two words, I plus Deo. And Deo is the Latin word for God. Well, this woman got all excited because she was working on a lecture, and the title of the lecture was Ideals, spelled I-D-E-A-L-S. And so that similarly has the word idea in it. It just adds the letters L-S to the word idea. So she was fascinated by, I told her what the book, what my book was about. It talks about ideas. God puts thoughts in your mind, and that's what ideas are. And Deo was the Latin word for God, and so she was fascinated by that. Uh, and she wanted to talk more and ask me some questions because she was um, trying to write something about this lecture she was giving. And she thought, wow, this is a great thing that just happened because I just, I wind up at the beach on the same day as her. And there are four beaches at this uh, um, ocean front that I go to. So it's coincidentally, we're at the same beach of the four beaches. I think we're at beach number three on this particular day. So both her and her friend were amazed, and so was I. That I was at beach three, and I'm running into someone who could use the word idea and the explanation of that. Um, and so she's going to be incorporating this into her lecture. Uh, but what happened next was that I couldn't see, you know, I was standing, and they were sitting on the blanket. And I couldn't see what they saw, but up in the sky uh, above my head as I was talking to her, a beautiful large rainbow came out, which they couldn't miss. But the most astounding thing was that they both saw another thing below the rainbow. 
and uh, I shouldn't say below, I don't know if it was below or above, but they saw another amazing thing. And if you are familiar with the uh, image of Jesus, the picture of Jesus that is used for Divine Mercy, Divine Mercy Sunday, uh, that's what they saw in the sky. Uh, so if you Google Divine Mercy Sunday, you'll see a picture of Jesus uh, indicating divine mercy, where there are rays of light, rainbow colors coming out of his heart. Uh, so in the picture of divine mercy, you see rainbow colors. Uh, and they saw in the sky, while we were talking about idea and ideals, they saw a rainbow and they saw this image in the clouds of Jesus that matched the picture of divine mercy. Totally amazing, unbelievable coincidence miracle. Um, our next coincidence miracle is from someone who tells us uh, that she was uh, assisting in the um, uh, hospital as a nurse um, where they have deliveries of babies, and she was assisting. Uh, and when the baby was born for this particular woman, she noticed that the baby's head was nodding in a certain way. And she remembered just vaguely somebody telling her in the past that that kind of nodding uh, when a child is born uh, indicates a problem, a, a disease, an illness. And so she brought it up to the doctors, and the doctors did some checking, and they found out, uh, thank God, that she spotted that because she was correct. Um, and it could be very fatal. It, was, it could be a very serious fatal, uh, causing brain deaths, uh, brain problems, and then death. And so the, the doctors were able to get into immediate surgery, and everything worked out fine. And now this was a few years ago. So it's a coincidence miracle that she just happened to be there and happened to know and remember uh, this certain kind of a nodding that happens when a baby is born. Um, the next coincidence miracle is from someone who wrote to us uh, about their mother. Their mother uh, had an illness uh, that caused seven of her body parts, seven of her body parts to shut down due to vascular uh, problems, uh, that circulation. Uh, it's called peripheral vascular disease, peripheral vascular disease. Um, and this was happening to her mother. So after she heard the diagnosis, she got busy calling her family, and they all, all the family began to pray for this one specific serious illness. And it turns out in the next day or two, when, when mom went back to the doctors to talk about next steps to take, uh, the whole thing had cleared up, totally cleared up and passed away within one or two days of their prayer. So once again, this points out the importance of praying and getting other people to pray with you whenever you need miracles in your life. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone who tells us that they were getting inspired by God to do something on a certain day, but they already had a long list of things to do. They couldn't believe that God really, really wanted them to take on this other thing and not work on the things they already planned to do. So they decided, based on listening to our shows, etc., that they would ask God, okay, if they saw three sevens, three sevens by a certain time that day, uh, that if they saw three sevens, then they would do this thing they're being inspired to do. And they were out shopping someplace, so they looked up, started their car, ready to drive home. And they looked up, and right in front of them at that moment was a car with a license plate, the letter G for God, the next letter G for God, and the number 7. So GG7 is really three sevens because G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week.